You can now follow me on all my social media platforms to find out who my latest guest will be. And don't forget to click the subscribe button and the notifications button so you're notified for when my next podcast goes live. That takes a long way in life, I believe, that like, just 100%. being a good person. Like, there's so many fucking idiots out there who talk a good game but don't back it up. 100%. Went to primary school in Rumford, then I went to secondary school, went to secondary school in Brentwood, went to a great school, got expelled. Why? Got expelled uh, for being an entrepreneur. Um, <laughs> this is actually quite a funny story. There wasn't a commodity that I didn't sell. Like, there was, I done everything. What's the worst thing you've ever sold and you, you got um, away with it? <laughs> That is what I'm like, I like doing everyone a deal. And I've always sold my products as I've done that. And even back in the day, it was, don't go in a shop and pay 90 quid for that t-shirt. You can have a score it a day. And it was, that's how I've always worked, you know? And I've always worked, that's me, that is me. Give everyone a good deal. People are drawn by energy. You've got a good energy, so people are going to buy into what you say. But if you're selling me a mattress and now, I'd probably fucking buy it. We'll have one in here, we'll have one in here in a minute. Don't worry about that. And he come in and he started, he literally started slating everyone. What's your name? You call yourself the Falcon. Oh, well, you shout, like, and you started ripping everyone. And I'm just, I'm laughing, yeah? And he's like, why are you laughing? I'm like, it's funny, everyone's all so serious. He went, but he sort of looked at me and he thought, hmm, what's this case about? Like, because I'm just cracking up. And he went, Tom, you've, you've said that you're quite jammy. Are you a donut? I said, well, <laughs> I said, well, low sugar, I'm not being funny, I probably am, mate. I said, I want to start doing the mattresses. And I went and got four of the best mattresses. I went and had them cut open. We went and made our matches better, and I, me and my pal Big Lang sat in a van just taking orders off of Twitter and Instagram. And the power of social media is unbelievable. Like, we was driving to the ends earth to drop matches off to go and nick 50 quid a mattress, but we didn't care. We was doing 40, 50, 60. It was mental every single day. Um, and we built it, built it, built it. And we just, now we've got a company that sells the top quality mattresses at prices that people can afford, because I believe that everyone should be able to afford the quality. Honestly, one thing I do drink, I must drink about 10 bottles of water a day, or 10 glasses of water a day more. What? Mm. You must be pissing for fun then. Yeah, when I get in the pub. Is it water bed you sell? That's what fills them up. <laughs>
because uh, I'm dyslexic. So I was never, I've, I'm intelligent. I ain't saying I'm fit because I'm not. And I, but things I struggled with, I made up with by always being someone's mate and always getting on with people and then people would always help you. Yeah, gift of the gab. That's it, yeah. Did you have to utilise that because did you ever feel more pressure on you at school? Mm, I was always the cheeky one that was naughty but weren't naughty naughty so I could get away with it. Like, I can't miss, I can't do this. And she'd go, Tom, come on, come over here. I love you. <laughs> like, yeah. That was me. Uh -huh. That was me. But yeah, I had a, I had a, I had a, I had a lovely upbringing. Um, and I, and I learned a lot as a kid. I learned, I learned how to talk to people. Like, I always look as my dad, and always, he always goes to me like, Tom, it ain't about what you know, it's who you know. Um, and I've always gone out of my way. Like, anything I do to make sure them little manners go a long way, you know, always be polite, always ask questions, always say please and thank you, always hold the door open. Always, and, and, and that has helped me in life because as a kid especially, they go, little Tom, he's all right. You know, he's a good kid. He's all right. I'll get all right. To, you know, like, and some of my mates say, we're like, getting no good. I, I weren't interested. I was interested in making money and making friends. That was me as a kid. As a kid, you know? Mm -hmm. How did you get that mentality from your dad? Did he have? Did he get it passed down from generations? That kind yeah, of so like, so, boy mentality? Yeah, so, like, my family's all at the East End. My, my granddad, Harry Skinner, like, they, they're just nice people. Like, and anywhere, even that, it's so nice to see that like, I can go in any, anywhere and I go, oh, your granddad, when he was alive, he was an absolute legend. Or, oh, your dad, what a lovely fella. And, and, and I'm trying to be the same, you know? Like, and there's all, you're always going to get someone that don't like you. can't make everyone like you. Do you know yeah. what I mean? But it's, I'm just, I just get on with people and, and, I, and I enjoy meeting people and talking to people. I love it. I just See, love I'm it. the same. I like meeting new people. I like everything's networking. The reason I can get the caliber, I guess, is because I've got a good name, a strong name, but it's just networking. It's, it, you're blagging it as well. well couldn't you get anyone good this week and good <laughs> end up with me? <laughs> I'm going downhill, Tommy. I'm going downhill. <laughs> But that, how was it? How do you feel with rejection? How do you feel when somebody doesn't like you? Because I, I can't, I don't really like it. But because I'm, when you meet people, everybody's always laughing and smiling and feeling yeah. good. But when you get the old ass, so, but does that affect you also? Not really. You just not care. Just, don't know me, don't know me, do you? Uh -huh. Joke on. Don't matter, does it? Like, yeah. you know, you're always going to get in, yeah. You're always mm. going to, like, I've I, I found it, as I've gone through life, you always get the odd person that ain't going to like you. Yeah, and there's, listen, there's people that I don't like. Do you know what I mean? There's everyone's got who I like and don't like. So it don't, it don't affect me. To be honest, you know, not at all. No. So schooling was okay then. You kind of wind yourself was, through it. Schooling was good. Um, went to primary school in Romford, then I went to secondary school. Went to secondary school in Brentwood. Went to a great school. Got expelled. Why? Got expelled uh, for being an entrepreneur. Um, <laughs> this is actually quite a funny story. So. I remember there was a bagel shop in, in the high street that everyone used to go to, but it was like three or four quid for a sausage, which was when you're a kid, you know what I mean? And I'm doing all the paper rounds, I'm washing cars, I'm setting up market stalls, like, and I'm getting a few quid. And, and, and say getting a few quid, probably like 60 quid a week. But you know, as a kid, you're like having it off. And uh, I remember going to my dad, here, dad, come on, give us five a day. Like, and he used to go like, nah, like, mate, you got to work. And my dad used to charge me a hundred pound a week rent when I was a kid to make me learn how to, and I know it sounds mad, he ended up getting it back to me. I go, dad, I'm a bit short this week. Like, I want to go and buy a new pair of trainers. But, you know, in school, now, I went to him, look, can you give us a five a day? So, and he went, nah, like, if you want to go and do them things, you've got to earn it, mate. That's how, that's the way of the world. So I went, all right. He said, but I might find something for you. So him and his mate, Alan, went to the pub one day and got absolutely slaughtered. And they was back at my ass in Romford. And I remember coming back and I think I had rugby training and I come back all dirty. And he went, come in, booze out of there. He went, come in, we've got something for you. And I went, what is it? And there's a suitcase. And what's it? And he opened it up. I've opened it up and it's full of porno and pirate DVDs. I'm a kid and I, and I went, look at all these. Wow, look at the new Harry Potter film. Like, oh, what's this? Of course, this one's a bit dirty, dead. Like, what's all it? He went, mate, what you got to do is three quid, two to five. All your mates are going to lap it up. And I went, oh, lovely. So I went to school. I whacked the old suitcase in me like I'd be little JD string sports bag, knocking them out. I was, I think I made about 200 quid in my first day doing it. I was like, this is easy, you know? Better than selling chocolate bars. And uh, after a couple of days, just paid my dad back a bit of money for the DVDs that he bought off some geezer in the pub. Was in the lunch hall with me tray. I've gone, miss, can I have the uh, sausage casserole, please? Oh, was that jam roly pole? I left that as well, please. As I've leaned over, the bag split. And a selection of 
porno DVDs all over the floor <laughs> of the lunch room. And this, this teacher hated me. I, I didn't like me. He went, what are they? I went, come on, sir. You know what they are. I look, they're pornos, obviously. Straight to my office. And I was like, oh, here we go. <laughs> oh, well, oh, after lunch, I see, I've gone, gone to his uh, office. I said, where are my DVDs, sir? Can I have them back? I ain't paid with them on shit. <laughs> and he, he, uh, he said, no, I've sent them to the headmaster. I thought, oh, here we go. So I've had to go to the headmaster's office and I remember sitting there waiting and he's like, I'm going to have to ring your parents. I was thinking, well, ring me mum. Like, it's better for you, not for me. <laughs> ring me mum, you know? And he's ended up ringing me dad. And my dad's come down there and uh, it didn't go well. It wasn't, wasn't a very good meeting. My dad actually said, he was, look, he said, I'm just trying to teach him how to buy and sell. And, teach. and the headmaster's gone, well, they're illegal, mate. Like, I can't have that in my school. He said, well, come on, he's only a kid. Like, it's my fault. I'll take the blame for him. And then he had my sister going, well, I have to ring the police. But they went, oh, fuck, oh, what's going on here? And uh, that was it. That was my last day of school. And the next actual day, I remember going, we had a little uh, uh, workshop in Raynham. And I remember going and working in there. And, and uh, I was putting prices on DVDs that he was selling in the sweet shops. And that was, that was it. And then never went back to school. Um, never, yeah, never done college, never done university. Just went straight in the deep end. Started on the market, started buying and selling anything and, and uh, went from there. That was it. How hard is that to be a constant grafter to try to turn that coin? Well, it's, it, it was hard because when I got a little bit older, when I got sort of to me like later teens, my mum and dad split up. Um, did that affect you? It did because obviously I loved the family life but then my mum my mom is, if you meet my mum, she's the loveliest person you ever meet in your life. Like, like if she was here today, she'd go, James, what do you want? Do you want a ham sandwich? She just, the nuts. She's a, up in me world. Whereas my dad is, do you want to go pub, have a beer? <laughs> like, they're so different. So yeah. it probably was... It's There's a better, be right reason to better for it, Of course. But, and, and at the time as well, I remember like, my dad wasn't doing very well. Um, he was like, wasn't, was, was skin really, his business wasn't doing well. And my mum didn't have any money. And, and um, I had no one that I could go can I borrow any money from to buy a bit of stock? Because I wasn't old enough. I was like, you know, I was 17, 16, 17. So I was always working, but then I was having to, you know, I didn't have enough money to get to the next level. So it was hard, but I never went without. I never, I never uh, went skin. I always make a living. I was, but I was, at, at that time, because um, my mum's house only had two bedrooms, it was my brother and sister upstairs and my mum, and I was on a little pull-out bed in the front room downstairs and I didn't care because I'd wake up in the morning and I'd go and get in my van and I'd drive to wherever and I'd sit up in the market and whatever I had in the back of my van I would go and punt and I, and I, and I thought well I'll keep myself going and then eventually I'll be able to go and get my own gaff you know and it it, 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 it it was hard obviously because there was days when you when you, you spend say you, you, someone goes Tom I've got, a, I've got a range of these right they're going to be an absolute winner and you and you got you got your working money you got your two grand you buy your bit of stock and you stand on three or four market stalls and you don't sell a thing and you think, oh, what am I going to do? How am I going to pay me? I can't even pay me. What am I going to do now? So having working money, I've learned you've got to build it up. That's essential. I've learned that through experience. Um, and I, this is one thing I, I'm pretty rambling on too much. Sorry, James. No, that's good. Shut. That's what I like, mate. That's just what I like. <laughs> but I'll tell you one, th one thing that actually happened to me. I, one of my best mates, Ben the Barber, Ben Wilson, um, he had a flat on North Street in Romford and Football was playing. I think it was Arsenal. Arsenal playing someone. We're going to watch it, and I had an old piece of poo van that ain't worth a monkey. Yeah, and in the back of it, I had a load of jackets that I just spent my last tenner on. I literally it, everything was in there, and I parked mm. outside the flat. We went upstairs, had a couple of beers, watching the football, having a great time. I remember going, I remember going to the boys about 10, 10 of my pals, and it was all a couple of years older than me. I said, boys, I've got some lovely jackets in the van. Like, I'm going to go and run them up. They're only at school. Before I got nicked, cut 100 quid, went down and my van got nicked. <laughs> I was like, ah, sore. And then I remember, I remember ringing up my dad's pal we got the van from, and I went, Steve, I went, that van's... He went, who the fuck's going to nick that van? It's a piece of shit. <laughs> but he yeah. didn't, and, it, and like it was, because I never had no working capital back then, it was, oh, I've got to start again, you know? And I didn't, mm -hmm. and it was just that, but well, you could keep going. Was that always like that then, back to get into the markets and constantly try yeah. to keep your head above water? Mate, there wasn't a commodity that I didn't sell. Like, there was, i done everything. What's the worst thing you've ever sold and you, you got um, away with it? <laughs> I don't know, uh, <laughs> 
everything. Yeah, you watch like only fools and horses, and used to sell like dodgy tape recorders, and they used to go on fire and shit. I've had, I've had everything. I used to sell cut the snide handbag. Like there weren't nothing I wouldn't, I wouldn't turn an eye to. You know, I um, there would, I would sell everything. You know, if if, and 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 this was me being young and being naive when I first started out in the markets. I was naive, yeah, and I actually got nicked um, because I bought a parcel. But part, but, so I met a geezer I was working with and, and he used to get fantastic lines. Got face creams here this week, I've got them next week, I've got this next week, I've got them. And it's just, oh, lovely, boom, I take down the car, but I take down the market, take down the pub, and, I, and it was brilliant. Anyway, one day I was, uh, I had me um, a bit of stock in me van. I've gone to go and uh, sell it and, and uh, police have shut the road off, put a thing out and I put a spiker out in the road, all behind me, I thought, what is going on here? I pulled out the van, thrown on the floor, locked up. I thought, what? What's going on here? What's happening here? And um, they went, mate, all that gear in your van's nicked. And I actually generally didn't know. I was just buying it in good faith and I went, oh, shut up. <laughs> and uh, that was one of, the, one of the things and I thought, ugh. And again, back to square one, got nicked for it, got dummy bits and pieces, whatever I like. But you learn, you know, and and uh, obviously I remember when I was sitting in the um, plate. They thought I just they thought I was straight. I went, mate. I'm being honest. With you, I just bought some random keys. Don't know who he is. You know, you know he did. You know what I mean? I didn't. I was like, I have no idea, mate. I'm so sorry. I ain't gonna do it again. <laughs> <laughs> and they just looked at me thinking, you know, mate. Then I was like, don't. I seriously, don't. It was like, so you'd buy all that stock or something. I was like, mate, I do not know. Like, I just bought some random keys at a car boot. I have no idea. And uh, yeah, that was me first little. Um, Naughty experience, as well. See, when you're down the market, does it do you get pulled with the coppers? We've got a place in Glasgow called the Barras. People used to sell the DVDs and all the fake clobber, and it was fine. But then, over the last five years, ten years, people places they've been getting shut down as yeah, coppers course. constantly on the, the I mean, like, everyone loves to go to market and get a deal. Like, have you ever got a little snide raffler in shirt, or if you got a little Prada shorts I still or do it. Yeah, I'm doing well and I still do it. Cool, so every, every, everyone, everyone, you know, likes a bargain. And, and I did just sell a bit of snide in the market. And that, that was before I started actually doing my own businesses. But it was it was anything I could get my hands on, I sold. And I was good at it. I was really good at it. But my problem has always been, not now, but back then was, I've got a terrible addiction to knocking out money. Like I could earn 10 grand in a week and I could spend 12. I was just, I just loved the good life. Um, but yet again, I've got a very good talent. I can get money just as easy. So, I'll, but that was the problem with me when I was younger was, I'd, I'd, I'd have a market on a Sunday and I'd go and earn myself a grand. I think, fantastic, wow. But then I'd be up, and I'd be up the Mayfair, up the West End or something, like an idiot, buying bottles of champagne. And really, I didn't have the money to do it, just like a div, you know what I mean? But it, it taught me that, Monday morning, wake up with a little hangover, skint no reddies, I've got to go and earn some more. And that made me hungry because I'll be up there with all these city brokers and all these big players and I'll be like, I want to be like them. But I don't, I want, and I would never, I'd always hold my own. If they bought a bottle of champagne, I'd buy a bottle of champagne. But I, I would want it to be that, that lifestyle. And, and it made me so hungry to earn money as a kid, like so hungry, because I love, I just love the grind. I love doing deals. And I, and, one of the things that I've always done, and anyone who knows me can tell you this, anything I sell, I'm all about the people. Like, so, for example, now, I'm just going to fast forward to now. Like, when I started my mattress business, I literally bought five of the highest priced, best spec mattresses on the market. I took them to a manufacturer. We cut them open. We looked what was in them. And I said, how much it cost to make them? And they was like two, three, four grand. And they was going, about 250 quid. And I was thinking, well, how can these firms charge two, three, four grand, yet they're having, they're having people over? So that is what I'm like. I like doing everyone a deal. And I've always sold my products as I've done that. And even back in the day, it was, don't go in a shop and pay 90 quid for that T-shirt. You can never score it a day. And it was, that's how I've always worked, you know? And I've always worked. That's me. That is me. Give everyone a good deal. Yeah, that's the best way, though. But I think the bubbly personality is is a big win as well. Like people are drawn by energy. You've got a good energy, so people are going to buy into what you say. But if you're selling me a mattress and now, I'd probably fucking buy it. We'll have one in, this, we'll have one in here in a minute. Don't worry about that. Do you know what I mean? But you go to these kitchen places, people are buying kitchens and not getting them for three, four months. These places don't even have the kitchens. No, no. They're paying for them up it's front disgusting. and then they're ordering that 
wherever the fuck they're ordering and bringing it back and then giving it they're making fortunes James, of people it's an absolute liberty like you don't realise that all these big firms they take your money up front yeah. they haven't got your stock they're going to make your stock yeah like they'll make you wait six to eight weeks I physically hold the stock so if you rung me out and went Tom I need a super king size mattress I've got five or six hundred pounds to spend. I'll go, well, look, he's one at six and a half. It costs you three and a half grand. Same spec, same thing, made by me with a guarantee. Where'd you live? Oh, you're up in Glasgow. You have it there on Thursday this week. They'll be like, how'd you do it? It's because we're hungry. I've got, I've got a team around me of all, all my friends. And they're all my friends when it works for me. And we just get the job done. And we have fun doing it. That's the best way. That's the best way. Did you have many friends in your younger years? Mm. Teenage years, or were you constantly course, on yeah. the draft? I've always been, I've, I've always been, ah, tell me, you get you anything. That you was me. people pleaser? No, no, I actually ain't. If, mm-hmm. if I don't like something, I will tell you. Like, yeah. that's me, yeah. Mm-hmm. I will tell you. <laughs> How, see, when like, your mum and dad, the relationship broke up, did you feel more pressure on you to earn more income? Uh, yeah, obviously, yeah, because uh, 100%, you know, I couldn't go, dad lends 50 quid or, you know, mum, you ain't got a score, you know what I mean? But I was young then, I was young then. Obviously, by the time I, I sort of got to my late teens, my early 20s, I was, I was on my own two feet. I was, I, was, I was all right, you know? Do you work better under pressure? 100%. Why is that? I don't know what it is. I, I, I love pressure. I don't know why. I don't know why I do. I just, mm-hmm. It's just, it's like, I'll tell you what, I'll tell you what, I'll t- an example that happened this week. Geezer's ordered for a hotel. He's ordered 80 something mattresses, 80, 86 mattresses. I spoke to my manufacturer, they can only physically get me 70. And I'm like, oh, what am I going to do? And I've run around to other manufacturers and they're like, well, Tom, we're, we're, we're doing things for Dunham, we're doing things for. Come on, like, and it's just the but I just get a buzz out of it. I just mm-hmm. enjoy it. I don't know what it is. is and that, I, I hate letting people down. I hate it. Is that when you feel alive? I don't know, I'm always alive, don't I? I'm just mad, yeah. don't I? I'm just like a good thing you fucking have, though. <laughs> not, was there ever a time you felt changing career paths? If it got on Yeah, top? yeah, of course. Yeah, when I was young, yeah, when I was younger, yeah, I did. I, I, um, it was, I was, do you know what? When I was up early 20s, I was fed up of never having enough, always like, and people go, Tom, but you do well. And I go, yeah, but I ain't never, I weren't never going to get rich. I was good time, Tommy. I was going to get a cut of grand a week and then go and knock it out a weekend. Like, don't, like, I did really. Like, I was champagne on lemonade money. That was me. Um, and it weren't, I, I, and I remember sitting down myself thinking, I can't continue my life like this because I oh, eventually want a family. I want, I want a nice house. I want nice cars. I want a business. I want a bit of structure. There was never no structure back in the day. Um, and that actually started to come. Funny enough, when I met my my lovely missus, Sinead, because um, when I'm, I met her, and I and I, this is like mid twenties now. I'm skipping forward all years. Sorry, James. That's I'm, okay, brother. Just... That's okay. We just <laughs> wing it, mate. Just what we're doing, life. Well, like, well, like when I met so so Sinead, is, if you met Sinead, she's beautiful, lovely girl, love at peace. She's fantastic, yeah, and really good for me because the day I met her, I was actually in the city of London, being Charlie Big Potatoes with no dough. I had, I had a thousand quid to my name. That was me. That was my whole entire bank roll and it was in my pocket there. Yeah. And I walked into a bar called Happenstance in St. Paul's and she was in there. I thought, gosh, she's beautiful. And there was all these bankers in there and I was looking the part, a little tie on, thought I was a governor. <laughs> I don't know what, I don't even know what I was doing up there. <laughs> <laughs> and, I just, and I just remember, and I remember she was with a mate of hers and they were trying to get a drink in the bar and, I, and there was all these bankers in there and I went, oi, I went, you two, get away from them helmets, come over here, come on. And they was like, who the fuck's this helmet? <laughs> Like, and I'm like, can I buy you a drink? And I'll give it large. What do you do? I went, oh, big time marketer, don't I? Got all the stalls down here and doing all this. And they're thinking, who's this idiot? <laughs> and I'm thinking, who is this? Like, when I think back, I think, what a donut. And uh, I remember we ended up having a drink and I spent my whole entire grand, right, on that day, on that night with her. We was in we was in the sushi samba. We was in Little Italy and so we was drinking pink champagne in the Wardour Street. Come to the end of the night, I've got, got her in a cab, I thought, pulled this, she went, you ain't coming on me. Like, oh, for fuck's sake. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Grand down. Dropped her off in Finchley Park, North London, uh, to her, to her mum, mum and dad's ass. Um, went back home, and I remember, I remember going to the cab, I went, mate, I don't think I've got enough of this fare. Like, just knocked on me a bit of dad, he was laughing. I went, mate, I promise you I'll get you. And I did, and the next day, I, I brought a bit of dad, mate, paid the cab driver. And I had, I had a, I remember this van, it was my worst van, it was a Fiat, one of them big, I can't remember what it was called, but a huge Fiat van, massive old, like a Sprinter, but worse. And the windscreen wipers didn't work on it. 
And she's texted me in the morning saying, thank you for a fantastic night. Really enjoyed myself. Like, it was brilliant. Um, she went, what are you doing later on tonight? And I went, oh, well, me and you go out, eh? And she went, yeah, well, like, what do you want to do? I went, we'll go to cinema. I think so. I'm going to cheer. got no money left. So I remember that day, I remember running about in my old van. I went down a pub called the New Inn in Gideon Park, knocked out some T-shirts. I had to add 100 quid to come out, which is very, isn't it, really? So I got and picked her up in this old spunky old van with rust holes. She obviously, last night, I'm giving it all Charlie Big Potatoes. She looked at this van and she went, I ain't getting in there. <laughs> <laughs> get all, sl- all uh, bits and pieces in the back and uh, we've gone to the cinema I've ended up churning all the pick and mix <laughs> yeah, back, what do you want <laughs> Sit, sitting in the thing and, and, and we had a, and we had a what the cinema I went into um, I think it was Frankie and Benny's afterwards had a bit of dinner dropped her home and I fell in love with her and then we went on loads of different dates and and uh, yeah and it, it was after we was like courting going out for a little while and, and uh, I remember I remember she went do you want to go on holiday and I was like, yeah, yeah, how much is holiday? Because I hadn't really been on holiday. I hadn't been away. I hadn't been on holiday since I was a kid with mum and dad. So I was like, how much holiday? She was like, oh, about two and a half grand. I was thinking, fuck, I ain't got two and a half grand. And that was actually when I thought, right, that's it now. No more fucking about and no, sorry if I keep swearing. That's okay. No, no more, no more um, winging your life and no more nicking a bit of money and going out. Let's get yourself sorted. And, and, do you know what I actually done? This is how I started where I am now. Is I bought myself a temper pillow and it was 90 quid. Yeah, because I was having a problem, because I'm quite big, I was having a problem when I lay on the pillows like sinking into it. And I bought this bed and it cost me 90 quid. And I remember, and I wouldn't shut up about it. All my mates, so I went, oh, this pillow cost me 90 quid, but it's the best pillow I've ever had. And they was all like, Tom, it's a pillow year on me. And I'm going on about. So I've then got this pillow, done exactly what, what I've always done. Found a manufacturer up north in Yorkshire. We cut it open together. I said, how, how much that cost to make? Um, and he told me about nine or eight or nine quid. A geezer I've worked called Mark, lovely bloke, who always helped me for my life. Um, I said, Mark, you're going to have to chuck up 10 grand for this. Like, we're going to have to start doing this pillow job. He went, Tom, he went, you're about as reliable as a sieve, mate. Like, you ain't <laughs> you ain't having 10 grand. He said, but I'll do it with you. Um, and he helped me buy me first lot of pillars. And I bought them, sold them, bought them. Next thing you know, I'm doing these pillars. And I thought, I'm having a right good go here. Like, and then I had a little round. I had about 30 or 40 shops that everywhere I go and drop 20 pillars off. And they was taking them on wholesale. I was standing in the market selling me pillars. And... They was working and I had my own little brand. It was called the Fluffy Pillar Company. And I'm doing this little, and I'm, then, I, then I got a second pillar. Then I started doing bed sheets. And I thought, hang on a minute, I've got a business here. And this was right before when I went on Apprentices about three years ago. And I, and I thought, wow, but I said, I never had the, enough money to get to the next stage. So I was, but I was, I weren't ironing it out now. I was tucking it away, buying more pillars, tucking it away, buying more pillars. And Sinead, bless her, loves The Apprentice. Now, I actually, with, I know it's going to sound mad, didn't watch The Apprentice. Didn't really, I knew what it was. Obviously, I know Lord Sugar is, but I didn't really watch The Apprentice. It wasn't one of my, because I don't watch, I don't sit still, don't watch telly. So, it's come up on the uh, TV, it says like, and I, I'm, I'm sitting in the room with it, it says like, if you would like to become a, um, a candidate for The Apprentice, all you've got to do is fill out this form, and da da da. Now, I'm dyslexic, so forms to me ain't no good, yeah? Mm. So she's gone, you've got to reply to that. You're much better than all these donuts on here. And I said, no, I ain't going to do that. They ain't going to have me on there, are they? And she went, no, Tom, you've got to, you've got to do it. I went, oh, shut up, Sinead. I ain't going on that. Anyway, she's filled out the form, sent it off, nothing's happened. And uh, about six weeks later, she's gone, there, Tom, they've only emailed back saying they want you to come in for an interview. I said, oh, babe, I ain't doing that. Like, come on. Like, we're laughing about it. I said, I've been sending snide gear in the market for years. Like, they ain't going to want me. She went, no, but your pillows, Tom. Your pillows, you're doing well. Like, that little sugar, he, he, like, he comes from market background. You've got to go and do it. So I thought, when is it? She's like, son, so and so and so and so. And I thought, oh, that's a Friday, babe. Like, that's my dog out the boys. <laughs> and then, like, she's yeah. like, just for me, go and do it. So I went, all right, I'll go and do it. So I used to be quite scruffy. Timberland boots, pair of jeans and a polo. That's me, that's my outfit. In the summer, a pair of Raffer and swimming shorts and a polo and a pair of Reebok classics. That's, oh, there's two looks for Tommy, that's it, right? <laughs> scruffy as you like. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, uh, I've, gone, I've gone down and, uh, and I was wearing a Timberland boots. So I think I put a pair of chinos on and a smarter polo. And I've walked into this place up the West End. Um, it was just off the back of Oxford Street where they did the interviews. 
and there is untold, like untold amount of people all wearing three-piece immaculate suits, all with briefcases and file of faxes, and I thought, what? And I've gone in there, and I, start, I just started talking to people. So what do you do? So what do you do? Like, and I'm just having a chat, and I'm laughing with everyone. And there's, there was like a big circle, and there was like these offices, but it was all glass. And I kept noticing people looking down. But, I, but now, now I've got a little audience, and I've got about 20 people, and I'm having a laugh with them, having a joke with them. And I'm going, mate, he ain't going to ride. You look at the state of your suit, and I'm just mm-hmm. taking the piss out, but having a right good crack. And then they've, they've called us into a room, and they give you a number, one to, I think it was 40, or one to, whatever it was, it's 40 stand, you got to, and, you, and I remember walking in there, and in front of me was number 13. That's my unlucky number. I'm right superstitious. And number six is my lucky number. So I've gone, wait, six, come on, me and you are swapping. <laughs> right, and this geezer went, no, nah, come on, mate, do me a turn. He went, oh, and someone, I like 13, I've swapped with someone else. And then, as I've swapped, um, my number, whatever it was, I can't remember what it was now, they've picked me first. And they've gone like, Right, you've got 30 or 25 seconds to tell us everyone a bit about yourself and why Lord Sugar should be your business partner. And I've gone, right, uh, hello everyone. Got some lovely suits in here today. My name's Tommy Skinner. I know I earn a few quid. Lord Sugar be mad not to hire me. And then stood back down again. And I thought, oh, fuck this. <laughs> yeah. And then, and then they've gone like number 24. And they've gone... Oh, hello, I'm John Smith. I'm an senior executive at HSBC Bank and I can do it. And I'm thinking, oh, mate, I'm well out of my depth, yeah? Then they're doing someone else, someone else. And then they've done all the numbers. And they've gone, right, well done, everyone. Number, boom, which is me, boom. Can you please step out of the room? I thought, oh, well, I went, well, nice to meet you all. I thought, that's me out. They're going to the next stage. Walked out, me and this other geezer. And they've gone... Well done, you two have made it to the next round. I thought, <laughs> I thought are you winding me up? <laughs> right? They've gone, no, no, no. They've got to go and lift up to the next level. I went, all right, lovely. I'll go up to the next level. So I got to lift and I talked to this other geezer. And he, he was a right nice bloke, this geezer. He was a car salesman. And he had the chat. But he was like, he was good. And he went, so what do you... And I went, mate, be honest with you, I sell pillars. He went, pillars? I mean, that's what I do, mate. I sell, you know, fluffy pillars. That's what I sell on the markets. He went, oh, you ain't got no chance, mate. Yeah? And what do you do when I sell high-end luxury cars? I went, all right, mate. Yeah, wanker. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. all right, mate. Yeah. And we've gone to the next, we've gone to the next, he's probably going to watch us and think, that was me, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then we've gone to the next level and there's, there's a couple of desks and you sit there and you talk to this, um, uh, I think he's a producer or for the show. How me and you are now? And they ask you a series of questions. How would you deal with fame? And I went, I'm already famous, love in Rumford. Everyone knows me. And she started laughing and she went, do you think you're good at, I mean, I'm the best. <laughs> yeah, and I'm, just, I'm having a laugh. And she went, you are funny. And then she goes, but do you want to be on TV? And she went, there's a right answer and a wrong answer. And everyone I could hear them all going, no, nah, no, nah, I don't want to be on TV. I'm here to be a business partner of Lord Sugars. And I went, well, of course I'm here to be on TV. Why, why would I not be here? Like, I'd love to be on TV. I mean, think only people I see if I was on TV. And she started laughing and she went, upstairs. I went, oh, I've made it through again, have I? And uh, I've gone up now, you're in a little room. You're in a little room now, and uh, there's about 10 people or 12 people, and they're all, and they are all immaculate to be fair. And they went, Right, you're going to get grilled now. There's two rooms, and these are Lord Sugar's business advisors, and that they are. And, you, and they want to question you about your business and why you should get the quarter million pound for your business. And I thought, well, Let's go easy. And I, I didn't have a clue, I just winged it. Like, I winged my whole life. And I got in this first room, and the geezer started going at me. So what do you do? And I went, well, I sell pillars. I said, well, I make them in the UK, mate. Well, UK manufacturer, use the best materials. We sell the premium, top quality pillars at discounted prices. Like a market. Well, he went, well, people want high-end ones. I went, well, I went, mate, if a white company one was 90 quid and something, you go for a score, would you buy it? He went, yeah, I went, exactly, that's what I do. He went, I didn't know what to say. Then he went, well, he went, uh, I think you should import them from China. And I said, but my whole business is about supporting UK firms, mate. And I said, I don't want cheap to it. I want quality at discounted prices. Well, your margins ain't big enough. Well, listen, mate, there's enough for me, so I'm happy. But, but you're not, well, I'm making a profit now, mate. And then he, he says that, and I went, mate, I went, listen, I went, how many pillars do you sell? He went, none. I went, well, then leave the pillars. I went, leave the, I went, leave the pillars to me, mate. Yeah. And he just, he just, he just did what I was saying. Mm-hmm. He was having a laugh. Then we've gone to another room, and the bird went, I'm not, she went, I'm not even going to bother interviewing you. <laughs> she just went like, she went, I've seen you. She went, I, I was up there looking at the glass. Because I, she went, I see you, everyone around you talking. She went, we really like you. I went, oh, fantastic. Um, tell us a bit about you. So now I just tell them a bit about myself and this, that, and the other. A little bit like what I'm doing with you now. 
Uh, and she went, fantastic, we'll be in touch. Well, what do you mean you'll be in touch? Have I got the job or not? <laughs> and she said, we'll be in touch, don't worry, go on, off you go. So I've left there and uh, met up with Shanae. We went, we went to, um, went out in Finsbury Park had a few drinks, had a bit of food. She went, how'd it go? I went, yeah, really, I think I got it. I don't want to be honest, I ain't got a clue. And I waited a couple of weeks, nothing happened, nothing happened. Then I get a phone call. Tom, you've been selected as the final 50 or 45 or whatever it is. This is where Lord Chagrachi watches it and picks who he wants on the show. I want to ask, better go and buy a suit then. <laughs> I didn't have a suit. I only had my black funeral suit. That was a funeral. And, and, and when, <laughs> that was it. Like, I, didn't, I didn't have a suit. And... Uh, I went, I went and bought myself a suit, bought, bought a navy blue suit, and we had to come back in a couple of weeks. And now you're in a room with all these people who are, there's one in London, one in like Manchester, one in Ireland, one in Scotland, and they pick from each, their four that are going to go into the actual house. And there's a series of tasks you've got to do, James. Now, I really enjoyed it because I just had a laugh. There was... Um, First one, you've already, they go, right, can you uh, stand, you don't, never spoke to anyone there, can you always put, you can't talk, but we want you to number yourselves between one being the ugliest and 40 being the best looking. And I thought, what the fuck? All right. So I've just straight away, just got, I went straight to the number one, the ugliest boy in the room. Yeah, as a, as a, I just thought it would be funny. There's people arguing over who's the best looking. And I thought, what are they doing? Like, <laughs> yeah. yeah. And I was thinking, some of these are right munters. Like. <laughs> and, then they've, and then they've gone like, can you line yourself up in intelligence? Again, I just went straight to the one. They're all arguing over who's the most intelligent in the room. Uh, but, uh, but I am actually laughing. I'm actually laughing my head off. Like, I'm going, what the fuck? <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> like, yeah. And then they've gone, um, right, can you line yourselves up? One, being the least successful and up there for the most successful. I don't know if I went straight to the one. And I'm laughing. And I'm getting the camera's on. Like, <laughs> like that, yeah. And the, and the geezer's like, just on the camera, just laughing his head off. He's just like, because I'm just mate, taking a piece. Um, and then, and then they've gone, like, well done. Now all line up. Now you've got 20 seconds to sell something to our producer in front of the camera. And this is where I knew I'd smash it. And they've got out and they've gone, right, you come for, and they've gone, right, there's a box, right, there we go, tissue. Right, sell me this tissue. And this woman's gone, this tissue is the finest quality tissue in the UK, um, was 1,000 million pound, now it's 20p. Like, I was like, well, she ain't getting it. Like, <laughs> yeah. And then they've got, then they've got the some geezer, uh, he's gone out and had an, um, pulled an umbrella up. And they've gone, he's gone, this umbrella's limited edition. And he's opened it up in the room. I thought, I went, I went that's unlucky. <laughs> yeah, like, then they all started laughing. And he's like, oh, and they give him back. And, they, and I thought, what? Then they've gone to someone else um, and they had a pen. And they've gone, sell the pen. He's gone, this pen makes your handwriting better. And I thought, fucking hell, like, these ain't got no clue. Like, then they've gone to me and, and the bird's pulled out a boat. The woman's pulled out a boat and it's a boot. Like, and she's, this is, I've always told her, she's gone, put the boot in my hand. And she's gone, Tom, sell me this boat. And I went, what, this old boat here? And she's gone, sell, and you're on camera. She's gone, sell me this boat. And I'm going to do it to you. That's the boat. I've put it in her house. I said, how much would you pay for that boat? And she went, I don't know, one pound. And I went, sold. <laughs> <laughs> Easy as that. And they just all started going like yeah. that. And uh, then, then after that, they, because they apparently Lord Sugar's watching this. I don't know if he's here, he ain't, but he probably yeah. is knowing him. He's a nice bloke, by the way. Um, and and uh, thank you, mate. Got dry mouth talking. Yeah, Dana. And then uh, you've got to do a task where you've got to build a bit of furniture and everyone's arguing. And we built a, we didn't even build it, like collapsed. And I was a project manager and I was like, I don't know what I'm doing. Why am I here? Like, just, I was just mm. laughing. And then we went home that night. Uh, waited, didn't thought I'd get it, got a phone call from one of the producers, and they, because I've told all my mates I've done it, they was all prank calling me at the time, going, hey, Tom, it's fucking, it's Viggy from Baby Show, yeah. you got a job? And I'm going, oh, fuck off, oh, like, fish oh. but anyway, phone, and I'm, I'm, I was sitting around my mum's house, I was, I was making myself, because I don't stop it, I was making myself a sandwich, and I'll never forget, phone rings, we've held number, hi Tom, I sit so-and-so at the BBC, just letting you know that you've made the final casting. Fuck off, mate. Don't, you think it was a prank? And I thought, hang on a minute. No one's rung me back or text me going, ah, I got ya. Phone rings again. Hi Tom, we got to cut off. 
mate, I am so sorry. He went, I didn't hear it. Like, it obviously did. I think, oh no. Um, and then I had to go, I had to go back and they, they picked me for the, for the final casting, which was like unbelievable. And uh, first thing I done was went, went down to Westfields at Stratford, got myself a cut of suits, got myself a cut of tyres. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, and that was it. I was on but, The Apprentice. Because from all the apprentices, you're probably the most well-liked character that's ever been on it which is a phenomenal achievement but everyone hates him on it yeah they? some of them are, <laughs> are snooty bastards and you go I fucking hate that bastard but did they ever try and make you feel out of place or anything to no as if they were better than you like um no I mean I remember well, like when you when I first because when you first go on The Apprentice yeah like you they say to you sign an NDA you cannot tell anyone what you are doing so I only told like half a dozen people. <laughs> Everyone in Romford. Yeah, yeah like, I went, oh, yeah, they was going, shut up, you old mate. You ain't, I went, mate, I'm going on The Apprentice. They're going, never in a million years are you going on The Apprentice. When I am, I'm going on it. I'm, I'm actually going next week. You ain't going to see me for a few weeks. Um, my, one of my best pals, Big Lanks, they've seen Big Lanks. He's like seven foot tall, covered in tattoos. Looks like the scariest, how scary is he to look at? <laughs> right? Yeah. But he's loved my best mate. He told everyone, because I was awake for seven weeks filming it. He told everyone that I'd been nicked and was in jail. So when I got out of filming, everyone started going, oh, Tommy's a tour, mate. How'd you get on? I've been filming The Apprentice, and I believe me. Mm -hmm. That's fucking <laughs> mad, <isn't> it? <laughs> but, um, nah, uh, yeah, so, yeah, well, I went in there. Um, they take you, as you, as you go up there, they pick you up in a cab in the morning, you give them all your suits, your suitcase, they take your phone off you, and they say, you have got no contact with the outside world until you get fired. And I was like, whoa, okay. They put you in the boardroom the very first day. Um, you go straight into the boardroom. You don't talk to anyone else there. You sit and they go, you sit there, you sit there, you sit there. You sit. And I'm looking around this room and I'll never forget. I'm thinking, what, have I, what, whoa, like this is all a bit weird now. Mm. And I'm looking at everyone's shoes because you can tell a man by their shoes, can't you? And I'm thinking, Pony shoes that geezer, like, you know, just having a like, just, like, you, like, just <laughs> <laughs> judgmental <laughs> bastards. <yeah. laughs> and, I'm, and, I'm, and I'm just, but I'm having a lot of giggle to myself, yeah, thinking, God, what's going on here? Karen Brady turns up, Claude Littner turns up, there's more cameras than we got here today, all over here. There's mics on ya. And all of a sudden, Lord Sugar walks in and he just starts ripping everyone. He said, he said, uh, and he's, and everyone's, because, I mean, my business plan was literally one page. I'm not even lying, Joe. It was one page. It was like, oh, I sell pillars. I could do more money to buy more pillars and sell more pillars. That was literally, I'm not joking you, that was literally it. Because uh, paperwork I don't do, I can't do. Like, any, anyone, you ask everyone that works for me, I can't do paperwork. I'm just terrible at it. Um, so I did feel like I'm out of my depth here now, because now I'm on the show, I ain't got a clue what to do. Like, I ain't, I ain't a TV per. I've never been on TV before. I've never really run my own business. I've always been a duckman, but I've never had, I've never worked, I've never had a job in my life. So I don't know what it's like to be in an office and deal and work. With, I've always worked with me scallywag mates my whole life. I don't really know where, what, where I'm at here. Um, and he come in and he start, he literally started slating everyone. What's your name? You call yourself the Falcon. Oh, well, you shout, like, and you started ripping everyone. And I'm just, I'm laughing, yeah? And he's like, why are you laughing? I'm like, it's funny, everyone's all so serious. He went, but he sort of looked at me and he thought, hmm, what's this geezer about? Like, because I'm just cracking up. And he went, Tom, you've you've said that you're quite jammy. Are you a donut? I said, well, <laughs> I said, well, Lord Sugar, I'm not being funny. I probably am, mate. Like, I'm just having, I'm just, I went, I went I'm sure you love donuts. I'm just having a, but mm -hmm. I had a bit of banter with him off the, off the cusp, like straight away. Um, it was everyone's like sort of start going. I'm the best. I've never said I'm not. I'm not. I'm not the best. I'm good at selling, but I ain't good at all anything else. So I never said I was. And I think he quite liked that from the start. And then he he proper shit me up because I'm scared of flying. The first thing he actually said was, "Right, guys, um, you're the uh, series 15 apprentice candidates. Good luck. One of you will be my business partner. In the next three hours, you're getting on a plane to South Africa." I went, what? What? <laughs> what? I was like, what do you mean? Like, I've pooed myself because I, I hate flying. Got out there and there's a, there's a lovely lady, because like, everyone gets a, like, there's between fire put, you looked after by one person. What does they looked after? They were like, is everything all right? Do you want to put water? Like, them, but they're lovely, yeah. Loveliest people ever meet. Um, and I went, have I got to get on a plane? Is that, are we actually going to go to Africa or is that like just for the TV? No, no, tell me, we're going to the airport now. What? He's like, yeah, you've got to take your suit off now, put your jacket on, we're going to get in a car and we're going to get on a plane. Oh, yeah, but I can't fly, you know, I'm shit scared of flying. Well, you go home then. 
Well, I don't know. Well, I, well, I'll get so I got on. I got on the plane. I've done it, and I'm honestly, I'm, I'm most scared in my life. Like I've, I, I cannot fly on a plane. Got on there, you can't drink, you got no fun. So I can't even like ring Shalane and go, Mum, poor myself. <laughs> well, you can't talk to anyone. So I, I just got, I got to there. You, they've got, they've took all your money off you, everything. So I've got to the airport. I've managed to slip off. I don't know how I've done it. Got a bottle of wine and I've done a bottle of wine at the airport. <laughs> then I've, then I've got onto the plane, and because it's on, it was a British Airways plane that come from the trolley. All the drinks are free, and they, but everyone else just sleeps. A night flight. Everyone else is asleep, apart from like the cut the camera guys who are, all, who are my friends now. Like having a lot, and I go right. I'm necking these bottles of wine now. I've made friends on the plane. Now I'm walking out. I'm in the I'm in the first class talking to people. I'm up the back talking to people at the back of the plane. Like I'm just having I'm pissed out of my head. Also, they've gone within one hour. We'll be landing in Cape Town, South Africa. I'm like fuck. Everyone's been asleep for nine hours. They've all woken up. Oh, we're coming to land. How did everyone sleep? I'm like three. <laughs> Stephen, as we've landed, I'm boozed out of my head. They start filming a task straight away. You land, change clothes. So for the first task, I'm pissed. I didn't, I didn't even know what was going on. Um, but no, I just, I just really, really enjoyed it. Like it was just, it was just a life-changing experience, mm -hmm. James. Like, like to go from boy just knocking out bits in the market to then being on this big TV show. I was like, what is going on? But it was just, it was so much fun, and and, and I learned so much, and I and I made so many friends on there. Like. It weren't just the candidates you're with, it's the runners on the show, the, the, the cameramen, the sound guys, the producers, the script, right, everyone. Like, and I was just, and I was, oh, Tom, like, like, I was just chatting with them all the time, having a laugh. And I just took it as, as like, an experience, like, I can't explain to you, it was just the best, one of the best things I've ever done in my life. And I just loved it. Every single minute of it, I loved it. And that's why, I don't know if you watched it, but, Everyone else is slagging everyone off on it. I've never done it once. I was just mm. enjoying it and saying, I'm grateful to be here. I'm so. <laughs> they were going, Tom, you've got to say something back. I was like, Yeah, but I can't. He's what a nice bloke he is. Like, <laughs> they like, well, got to, well, no, I ain't going to slag him off. He ain't done nothing wrong to me. <laughs> Do you think they were trying a bit too hard, some of those people, just to try to of please? Of course, yeah, of course. I mean, I mean. See, that's the thing about life. No matter how much money you've got, some of these people, we're not just saying those people, but some people, for, even in London, <laughs> Like Scotland, Glasgow, when I go hill walks, everybody's good morning, hello. Down yeah. here, you can't say hello to anybody. Oh, you I feel do. as if oh, you just do. took a shit in a fucking kettle. That like, people are just caught up in that race where they're just constantly yeah, yeah, working yeah, yeah. to pay bills, but forgetting to actually live. Yeah, no, I've, I've always, been, I've always said yeah. like, I've always been like my whole, I, I've always been like that. Like, I mean, there are people that are, there's, there's people like and everyone, isn't there? But yeah. I tell you one thing that changed it for me on that show was. Towards the end of it, and there's, there's not many people left. We done a task, um, and we we're on a fuck, we we're on a train, and we had to run an event, this on this big event on this train, and we've got to sell tickets for it. And then at the end, the person that made the most money wins. It says the A team and the B team. I was in the B team. I can't remember what the teams are called, but I'm in one of the teams. And we're on this train, and we had a lovely day. Like we've driven all the way around London. It's an old, fantastic steam train. We've served them up food, and like part of the I've had to buy the booze, buy the food. That was all part of the task. And it was beautiful. Like, and everyone was moaning about, it. Like, oh, we've got to get up at three a.m. I was like, oh, I love it. Like, I'm used to getting up markets, and we're on this train. And I had a fantastic day, and I was stuck with Pamela, uh, one of the girls in the group. And she's an absolute blind. She got a cosmetics company, done really well for herself. Like had a and like, uh, there's me knocks out a couple of pillars on the market on a Sunday morning and I'm with all these proper business people um, it's gone to the boardroom and one of Pamela's jobs was to pick the allergies and the food but she forgot to do it but this girl like I knew she she had a proper business plan yeah, and she was such a blinder and I, I could tell that she knew what she's doing so it's gone to the boardroom and there's a geezer called Ryan Mark and he had to pick two people to bring back so one of them was going to get fired so he's picked this girl called Mary Ann and that Pamela. When I looked over and I thought, we can't pick that Pamela. She's got a proper business. Like, she can do well. And like, he, she might get knocked out because it was her fault. She's done the allergy wrong. Um, so I've gone, right, Mark, mate, you can't take her. <laughs> like, this has never happened in the history of apprentice. I said, mate, you cannot take her back to the ballroom. No, no, it ain't happening. I'll go. Like, I'm taking her. Everyone's like, what? They've, they've gone, stop filming. <laughs> They've gone, this has never happened. What do we do? Like, no one's ever just asked to go back in the ballroom to get fired. I said, well, no, I'm not having her go in there. Like, she's, she's a blinder. Like, she's got a proper business and she's done nothing wrong. And they're like, well, uh, okay. Like, well, the producer's like, look, she went to run with it. 
<laughs> so they've, they've started filming again. No, she was going, you sure? You do know what this means, Tom. Look, you could get fired. I said, mate, I'm not letting her go back in there. Like, she ain't, she's, mate, she, I mean, she, come on, she's like, she's got to get you a lawyer. Like, she's the one, like, she's brilliant. And he's like, all right, all right. Thomas and Mary Ann and Ryan Mark, you're back in the ball and one of you's getting fired tonight. And Pamela's gone off, yeah? And she started, she's like, oh my God, thank you, Tom, so much. But start crying. I'm like, don't worry, I'll be, I'll be back in the ass in a minute, don't worry. But what happens is when you get fired, yeah, they film a shot of you leaving wearing a coat. But me being me left me coat in the ass. So Pamela's now in the cab back from the ballroom to the house you live in. But the, the team have rung the um rung the uh the cab and said, Tom's like, can you please bring Tom's coat back? Yeah. But they but now Pamela thinks I've been fired, right? Because she thinks it's my coat going back because I'm going home. But it's because I forgot to wear it for the for the filming shot. So now she said she's so when I spoke, she's like, Tom, I'm crying the whole way back. Like she's like, I oh, want on oh God, like I've just got Tom fired. And uh, so she thinks, so, if, so she's gone back to the house, now told everyone that I've been fired. Anyway, I've gone in the ballroom and Lord, she's gone to me, he's winked to me, he's gone like, oh, and you can't fire me now, can you? Because <laughs> like, he can't, can he? Do you know what I mean? He's, he's fired that Ryan Mark and he's, he's, he's like, he went, that's brave what you've done, like, I like that. And we're having a, having a joke about it. Gone back in the cab, gone back to the house. And as, as they opened the door, that um, Mary Ann's walked in on her own. I said, oh, wait, and they've all gone, oh, like, where's Tom? And then I've walked like, and I'm like, yeah. cheering. And uh, it's on camera. So I, I just I mean, I'm like John Gotti, you can't get me. Like, like that. And everyone started pissing themselves laughing. And it was just, it was a blinder, you know, yeah. it was an absolute blinder. How was that then from the kids from the markets, Romford, to then getting a bit of publicity and becoming yeah, well, a household name from that show? Does well, that when, come a lot of pressure from that as well? Mate, no, when the show come on the telly, I never thought that I would be that well liked. I was actually panicking, thinking, Everyone's gonna think it was this white boy from Rumford, like it was this cocky little fella, like. And I, I, I was, I was, I was a little bit nervous, and it come out in the papers. The front page of Sun was like um, Lord Sugar's um, ex criminal or something. Like it was like I ain't a criminal, Fucked you know. You over. I, yeah, I'm, f I'm far from it, you know. Like I've done a cut a bit. I've had, a, I've had a lot of fights when I was a kid, like, and I, and I sold a bit of. Nick Gear and a, and a couple of bits and pieces. I'm yeah. like, you know what I mean. I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> I ain't no criminal, yeah. right? but I've but I've seriously, seriously turned my life around. Seriously turned my life around. And I was like, oh, they're all gonna write. And then Pete was writing, Ooh, like you know, like they're all, the, all the little trolls, like giving it before the even show started. And I was like, oh, I think I've done it wrong in here. She said, Don't worry. I, said, I went, No, I think I've done it wrong. Everyone's gonna rank me, you know. And it come on, and and it it was mad. It was actually. I can't explain to you, James, how mad it was, mate. Like, I would leave my ass, go to Lakeside, I go and get a pair of trainers, and I would get mobbed with people, like, mobbed. Like, people going, Tommy, you're an apprentice. Grab me, Tommy the Talking Turtle. Like, it was just mental. And then I thought, right, I better do something about the firm. So I made sure that the website, made sure the manufacturer really do, start doing the pillars. And then literally after the second or third show, all that, all that, all that, all that. It just snowballed. And then, and then to, the, to the fact where the manufacturer said, mate, like, we supply like TK Maxx and like some big firms that you sold more pillars than I have. Like, this is serious. And I'm like, what do I do? Like, they're like, well, you need to get like, and it, it was, then, then I was ringing up my powers. What are you doing? Well, nothing. Come on, come work with me. Like, mate, what are you up to? Come on, come work with me. Like, and then I, next thing you know, I had all my pals who were, who needed to do something, you know, because they was all going to end up getting nicked, like, mm. They weren't doing anything, and then they come work with me, and then and then um, we just started having it, like, and then we had, and then we started having fun, like some serious fun. Like we was knocking out seven, eight hundred pillars a day online. We was on the markets. We was we was getting in invites to restaurants, like, and, and I'm not, a, I'm not, I'd always pay. So like, even though I was going, come down, I was going, I ain't getting it free. I'm paying. I go, I'll bring all my mates with me, and we just had the best time for months, for months and months and months. And then we started expanding. And then I, and then I expanded. And then I, I really, so all the money I'd earn, and I'd earn a right few quid now, and it's more money than I've ever earned in my life. I honestly, some serious money. And then, I, then I've got the, then I've got the big warehouse, then I've got the office, then I've got everything. Lockdown, COVID, bang, dead, manufacturers shut. Manufacturer's gone skin. It was like, what? What I do? Oh no! Like I spent all that money, like invested it all into doing it properly, and 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 I'd I'd bought myself a silly watch, and I ended up having to sell the watch. And all me mates and everyone that was working for me 
We didn't work for like eight weeks for the start of lockdown. I kept everyone in full pay. And it was skinting me out because I didn't, I, I'd spent all the money on doing the firm. Then I managed to get out of it, get rid of it. And then the pillars sort of stopped. And we was a bit stuck because the manufacturers wouldn't, would not work through the, through the because it was, no one was, everyone was unsure about pillars. But the manufacturer done the mattresses, he was still going. And I went and see him and I said, look, like, you know what sort of numbers I can do? You, you, uh, I said, I want to start doing the mattresses. And I went and got four of the best mattresses. I went and had them cut open. We went and made our mattresses better. And I, me and my pal Big Lang sat in a van just taking orders off of Twitter and Instagram. And the power of social media is unbelievable. Like, we was driving to the end earth to drop mattresses off to go and nick 50 quid a mattress but we didn't care we was doing 40, 50, 60 it was mental every single day um, and we built it built it built it and we just now we've got a company that sells the top quality mattresses at prices that people can afford because I believe that everyone should be able to afford the quality where can people buy these mattresses? come, come to boshbeds.com boshbeds boom boshbeds.com or go message me <clears throat> We've got a team that works just on yeah. social media now. We've got Dom, Keegan, we've got everyone in the office, little type, loads of them. How many people's on, on your team? Uh, there's nine in total. That's amazing. Nine All from total. the back of the show, it's kind of enhanced your, yeah. your life and other people's lives yeah. around you. You've utilised it to your advantage. Brilliant, yeah. See, when you first met the, your missus as well, when you were the black guy and just winging it and telling the lies and because I used to play for Hibs under 18s I used to tell all the buds <laughs> I played first team what was that pure bullshit but how much does that change up did you have to change your whole personality and whole outlook I've never changed my life once you've just no. been the same character like, I've never yeah the only thing is I'll, t I'll tell you the only difference for me now is when I go into Tesco's people stop me for a selfie hmm. I'm still the same person I'll never change myself and I've got a serious business now a serious serious business that we are actually are competitors to the big brands now. They don't like us because we are selling what they sell for two, three grand for four, four hundred quid. And they can't compete because we haven't got all these big showrooms. We haven't got these million pound a year TV adverts. We have got me on social media and my team who work, who are the, mate, my team, I swear to God, I, I don't say all the time, but without my staff, I ain't got my business and I've got the best team around me and they work so hard and without them, I ain't got nothing. So I owe, as much as I owe the apprentice, I owe to the people I've got around me as well, working with me to build where we yeah, got to. Do you know what, what I mean? What makes a good salesman, Tom? Likeability, positivity, and give the customer what they want. You know, like if you walk in to buy a red shirt and someone tries selling you a blue shirt, you, I don't want that, mate. You know what I mean? But if someone, you, someone's got a red shirt that you want and they talk you, that's it. You know, it's, it's giving the customer what they want, giving them... <coughs> I've spoke so much my throat's going to draw I've got one here I'll put in a cup to look posh <laughs> it's only tap or even a bottle water. I just filled it up in the tap earlier yeah it's, 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 do you it's, get uh, a dried mouth, mouth a lot with talking don't shut up do I <laughs> no, I'll mow well, them out yeah? yeah all the time I, I, honestly one thing I do drink I must drink about 10 bottles of water a day or 10 glasses of water a day more what mm. you must be pissing for fun then yeah when I get in the pub is it water bed you see that's what fills them up <laughs> but now see, see with the mattresses we, we're taking this to, to a next level now like we're 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 a proper, we're a proper, like, at first it was a little bit like two blokes in a van driving around. We're, we're, we're taking other manufacturing plants now. Like, we, we've got warehouses, 10,000 full of mattresses. We're delivering all over the country within 48 hours. We, we, and we're giving a product, we're making everything in the UK and we're giving a product that people can afford. I believe that everyone should be able to have the top stuff. Whether you, whether you earn £300 a week or £3,000 a week, yeah? In my book, we're all the same. We're all cut from the same cloth. We all go to work. We want to enjoy it and we want the best things in life. Now, why should these premium products be such money? I'm happy to work and I'm, that's what I'm doing. I'm physically working skinny, but make sure everyone eats at the same time and offering products that I'm not a piss taker. Do you know what I mean? And, and it's just... None of these big companies ever come in yet and try and offer you a big deal to try and take you yeah. away. We have. We have had a... We have had a, We've had... We had someone try and buy our range and say that we want to be the sole distributor and we want to sell it this much. And I said, bollocks, like, and they said, well, are you going to sell? I said, no. I said, what you? I said, how many do you sell a week? And they went probably about 90. And I said, well, I sell 300. 
I said, no, and I'm not putting my prices up because that ruined... And, and they wanted to take the manufacturing abroad. I said, no, I'm not about making the UK. Like, I support UK people. I support UK... I support jobs in the UK. I support people in the UK. I don't want my prices to go up. And they... That's, that's me, you know what I mean? I'm, like, I'm passionate about it, you know what I mean? Yeah. How do you, where do you go from here then? You, you just stay in the UK or do you take it Europe, global, <clears> yourself? <throat> the world's the oyster, you know? I've, yeah. I want to be... I want to be a, oh, I'm more or less a household brand now, but I want to be, I want to have a bed in anyone's ass. But there's something really exciting that I'm working on because I can't stop burping now. What's happening to me? <laughs> I'm burping. I've done a couple of cheeky fuck no. I haven't. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm building the Bosch brand and we are products, different products coming out. Um, and we're all about, offering premium products at price people can afford. I want people to have luxury items so everyone can afford them. And my new thing, and this is, no one else knows about this apart from you today, yeah, is I'm bringing out the Bosch driver for golf. And it's this totally is- night and day from is, a mattress to a this, golf club. Yeah, well, I'll tell you what happened. I, so I play, I ain't a very good golfer, but I love it. And all we mates got right into it and I thought I'd start playing. And they've gone, Tom, you've got to go and get a set of clubs. So I, I've got my old granddad's set, which is 20 or 30 years old. I play with him and, I, and I'm, I'm all right. I'm okay. I can hit the ball a long way. But I went to go and buy a driver and I've walked in a pro shop and they was like five, six hundred quid. And he's going, yeah, this one helps you do that. This one helps you do this. And I went, mate, like, what is a good one for me that just goes a long way and straight? Well, this one here and that, I mean, and what you've got to do is get it done. Then you get it and I thought, what? <laughs> Mate, I just want to buy it. What one can I buy? That I, went, yeah, what, you buy this one and then you've got to come back and have it fitted. And I was like, that's the only one I can just buy. He went, well, unless you want to buy like an F1. What do you mean? Like, I want to... So then I, I thought, I've done the same thing as what I've done with the mattresses, what I've done with the pillars. I thought, well, this is, this is nonsense. I want a no-nonsense driver. I want a driver that you can walk into the shop and say, what's the best driver in here that ain't going to cost me an arm and a leg that's ready to go so I can pick it up, buy it and play with it? And I, we've spoke to the big manufacturers. We've, we've got it designed. We've got it created. And it will be ready to sell within the next month. Um, it's called the Bosch Driver. And it's just no nonsense. It is the biggest legally allowed head you can have on a driver. It's fully titanium. It's got the biggest sweet spot on the market. It's been specially developed to give you straighter, longer, further hitting ability without it going all over the gaff. It's got a shaft that's perfect for whether you've got a 30 handicap or a pro. It's the no nonsense and it's less than half price, less than half the price of all these big brands. Bosh. And I, bosh. And I can't wait for it. Cause I, Fair cause, play, yeah. And that's it. And, and, and yeah. I'm going to keep doing that. Yeah. With products, and I'm bringing the. This is what Bosch is all about. Do these ideas just come into your mind when you walk into a shop and you think he's fucking overcharging, and then yeah. you take that product and yeah. try and get it cheaper? Yeah, that's it's, the best way. That's see the entrepreneurial sh skills. It's just whether people like people, even the drug dealers, high end drug dealers, if they put that into whether it's selling fucking handkerchiefs or cups, they've got those skills to then make it course. successful in a positive way. Where does the name Bosch come from? I've always, I didn't even oh, ask, word. I've always, so I've always said Bosch, like, mm -hmm. you hit a good golf shot, Bosch, mm -hmm. or, oh, look, I've just got it done, Bosch, we've always said it, but when, when it come on the show and they started saying Bosch, my dad went, I've been saying that since the 80s, you prick, <laughs> 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 uh -huh. but yeah, I've just, I've just turned Bosch into my brand, like, um, and I'm just offering products that people can afford, uh, uh, the uh, that, that's, I know it's the brand, Bosch is the brand and we're going to keep. Send me all the links we can put in the description for people to get these golf clubs, get these mattresses, Fantastic, get yeah. everything. Let's touch on fatherhood. Oh, mate. How does that do, change the, the man? Mate, my little boy, I could start crying talking about him. Like, he's just well to me. Um, we had little Henry last November. Uh, it was a dodgy my, bus, was it not? Yeah, mate, it was scary. Yeah, 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 it was scary. So the the, the thing, the, the, what's the old thing that goes out the belly button? Yeah. Billy yeah. Called, got wrapped around his neck three or four times. And they sit, and so it was during lockdown as well. Like it was, um, we were, I've gone in the hospital, and this doctor coming, mate, this lady, mate, I, I wanted to, I'd give her the world because she went, Tom, now I don't want to, I'm not going to tell Sinead this, so it's up to you if you want to tell her, but the baby's in distress. Um, it's wrapped around his neck. He can't breathe, basically. I can't, um, we need to get him out now. There's no like 
he's coming out now. I went, all right. Uh, like you, they went, Tom, just go in there and hold her hand. And I just looked and she went, it's going to be all right. And I was like, I'm getting a bit emotional talking about it. And I went, all right. Sat there, held her hand. I went, she went, what did she say? I went, nothing. She went, not going to be long now. He's coming out. Don't worry, it's all right. I'm eating Percy pigs. <laughs> I'm eating Percy pigs. I'm eating Percy pigs. I ain't looking. Yeah. <laughs> right. And also, they, these doctors are fantastic. Absolutely fantastic. Um, they got him out and he was all purple, bless him, like a little alien. And he was all right. And they went, one, two, three, bang. And then nothing happened. Like, and I was like, oh my God, is he all right? And they just sort of done something to him. And, they, and he, he just went, meh. And I went, oh, thank fuck for that. Like, and then they put, they put little Emery on, on Sinead and I just looked at his little face and I went, Love you, like, and give him a little kiss. Like, he was all covered in blood. Oh, it's like the worst thing ever. Like, it's, it's like, what, listen, childbirth is like watching your favourite pub burn down. <laughs> That's one way to But it, mate, and yeah, I've, if, I, I, what I like, because I get up most mornings, I get up, I'm up at 4 a.m. nearly every day, go in the warehouse, come back, go to the gym, go to the office, go to the, I'm an early bird. So, and Henry's quite an early baby. So what I love is every single morning, I can hear him little wriggling his cot. And that's like my cue to get up at four o'clock. And he goes, he goes, <gasps> so excited to see him. I give him a little cuddle, give him a kiss, like, put, give him a snack and I go off to work. And, I, and it's, just, it's just the best fit. It's just, and it's made me think twice about what I'm doing. Like, even little things. Like I'd, I'm a bloke and I'd be in the pub at 1 a.m. And you know, come on out, come home and I'd be like, oh, like, you know what I mean? I'll be, back, I'll be back in 10 minutes and if I ain't, read it again in half hour. Like, send yeah. it, you know? Um, but it's made me sort of think think about my life a lot. And and since Emery's come, my business is built a lot because, well, because I want to leave a legacy. I want to leave something that, that my little boy ain't going to be knocking out old... I, I don't want him to be laying a pull-out little bed in the front. You know what I mean? I want him to have everything. And, and uh, he left that. He left that, you know? And, and I love being a dad. It's just... My, it's made me a better person, really. Yeah, James. but I think you just being in your son's life, he would have a good life anyway, no matter if you were sitting yeah. in a one house bed. No, of course, no. Of everything course. you've learnt this trade from, coming from fuck off, coming from that, um, the broken home when the mum and dad split up to then grafting consistently, you've worked relentless to get to where you are. So that's for anybody watching, it shows hard work does pay off, but it doesn't end there. I'm the same. People always tell me how success, how well I'm doing, how, and I think you are smashing it. Yeah, you? I am. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, well, but I don't feel as if for the levels that I'm going to go, I want to be the best on the planet. I ain't fucking around me. Yeah. I'm working consistently, yeah. and relentlessly to be the biggest and the best. But I always question why is that? Why do I do that though? Is that to keep busy so I don't have to sit in my own methods of thoughts? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm constantly on the go. But when you have kids, are uh, Everything I do is to leave a legacy. Like back in the day, I was drinking drugs, gambling. I fucking done it all. But that's because I was lonely. That's because I was insecure. But now I've got drive. I've got vision to then... You know, at the start, it's always a hard. The first two or three years is always a hard because you think, what the fuck is the point? But then the wheels start going into motion. Yeah. And you think, okay, I've 100%. got something. And then the greed kicks in because I'm a greedy bastard. I want more and more and more. I'm not just enjoying what I have because I'm constantly thinking on the next earner, the next guest, the more views. It's consistent. So now that you've got the sun in place, now that you've got everything, you're happier. How hard is that then to then cut out the spending this extra couple of hours in the pub watching the football when you know, okay, my son's at home. That your whole outlook of life we changes. We only go out six times a week, man. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, look, 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 it, look I, I'm just bringing everyone with me, mate. Mm -hmm. Like, Emmy's coming out with me if I go out. My missus is coming out with me. I, I've always been like that, and it, yeah, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna. I have curb spending because I'm now if I, if I, because we're doing all right now. But what we earn, I reinvest, and I'm and like you ask anyone that works for me, they are. Very well paid, very well looked after. We always. Dom, is that true? Yes, it is. He's very, very we're, we're, Like, and because, yeah, I'm mate, honestly. Why do you do that? Mate, because, yeah, mate, look, it's. it's, it's so it's not just all bravado in front of the cameras, no, no, you're no, the no, exact no. same. I spoke to you off um, cameras. For me, you're the same character on and off, and I'm cool. the same on it. It's just, there's no fucking mask, there's no bullshit. Listen, I'm here to make a crust. I have an agenda to be successful. So every guest that comes on, I'm using, but they're also using because it's a win win, same as course, yourself. Yeah. Like, that's, this, that's the hard thing, though, because there's so many two faced bastards out there. Like, people have got one face for social media, then another in person, and that's where I think the world Man, is I, becoming I am confused. Same the old way through. Like, yeah. I just. Yeah, I just, I just, I look, I enjoy my life. 
I look after, if you're my friend, you're my friend. Like, I look after you. And I, I'm bringing everyone on this journey with me. Like, this is a journey for me. I don't know where it's going to end up, but we're going to keep getting bigger and bigger and bigger. And if I can help you, I will. And that, that is me, you know? And, and, and look, if, if I fuck up, which I do sometimes, you know, I always fuck up. I've ordered stock before and thought, ah, oh, no, what am I going to do? But that's because I've been such a, like, I, my team will go, don't worry, Tom, we'll do this with it. We'll do that with it. You know, like, it's, I'm a great believer of you treat people how you want to be treated. Whether you're, whether you're the, like, you're someone that works part time here and there, or you're the big CEO, or whatever, you're the same to me. We all drink in the same pub. We all drink from the same glass. You know, we all eat from the same dinner table. We're, we're all, me, I'm a, it's one big family of me. You know, it's one big family. We all work together. We have fun. And uh, we're just going yeah, to enjoy the journey. Yeah. What's the, all the plans, the rest of the plans for the future then? You've got the golf Bosch clubs coming global. out. Global. Yeah. <laughs> How many brands do you, can, if you I'm want? Gonna keep, I'm going to keep bringing the brands out. Mm-hmm. I'm going to keep bring. I'm going to keep supporting the UK, small businesses. I'm not about all the big firms. I'm about, keep. I know it sounds, but no, it's, that's not my game. I'm going to keep it as products that, that are a fortune, that ain't when you're buying from me. I'm going to keep my team tight. I'm going to keep my family. Ever. I'm going to keep going it, but keep building it up until we are everywhere. Mm-hmm. And that's it. Mr. Sugar must be proud of you. I, he's all right, Lord Sugar. I talk to him every now and then. Yeah. He's, he's a lovely man. He's a lovely man, to be fair. Yeah, is, but, is he talking on your West Ham? He's, listen, he's just unlucky. <laughs> he's, he's, what, he's what it is. But. <laughs> yeah. So you've done all the, mate, you're on TV fucking all the time now, man. You've done some, what was, um, celebrity, what was it, celebrity chef? Um, Celebrity Master Chef, Master done Chef. that. Done Celebrity Master Chef. Uh, done eight out of ten cats. Mm-hmm. They're um, good guys. Oh, mate, they're... I know. Um, who's the boy with the teeth? Rob Beckett. Rob Beckett. I've like, seen his fucking video after England. They were sitting down a lane eating a... I think it was a KFC <laughs> out behind the police station, but I've seen the videos. When the he's he's a blinder. He's a nice uh, bloke. Like Jimmy Carr. Um, he's a funny I, bastard. He's a fun, I, I, you know, when I've done him on the telly, and he, he got left speechless. Mm. I've done the sales pitch to him. I do that. What would you give that? He, he didn't know what to say. He actually said, he went, I've never not, not known what to say. Uh-huh. He's a lot mate, Jimmy Carr. All these big celebrities, like, they're blinders, mate. I've, mm-hmm. Like, you get the odd one that's... A wine killed, yeah, but you get that every, every way my, in life. My, most people... I mean, you, I have learned that, though. A lot of people that you see on the telly, when you meet them in real life, ain't nice people. Yet, yeah, yeah. on the thing, they're like, uh, you know what I mean? Yeah. But I've learned... I, look, I'm going to learn that. You know, I'll take them as I find them. Like, I, I go, oh, mate, I'm a massive fan. They're like, don't touch me. I'm like, all right. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah don't damn it. That's definitely when you get your hand in their balls, though. <laughs> Kicked your camera. <laughs> I was squeezing their nuts over. <laughs> yeah, but listen, brother, for anybody maybe, because you're a bubbly guy, you've got the head screwed on, you're, you're reaching for the stars, you're thriving. But again, we're greedy bastards, we want more. But for anybody that's maybe, on a, have you ever struggled in life? Um, Mentally? No. Nah, I, no mate, I. I I've been, I'm very headstrong. I've yeah. always been like that. I've never, never mentally struggled. But what I will say is I've noticed it a lot, especially on my social media. Like my, my DMs are always open. Like um, amount of people I spoke to, like I'm not just saying this. I've not got millions of followers, but I've got a nice, I've got a lot and I love my followers on, on social media. We get hundreds every day, hundreds of messages, hundreds and hundreds. And it's men- mental. The amount of followers we got, the amount of messages we get is ridiculous. We've got two people on it all day. Um, and I and I, like I take time of day. People go, Tom, I'm struggling. I go, send me your phone number. I give them a call. Come, mate. Like they go, what's your? I go, yeah. Look, listen, I've done it loads of times. Um, I always get asked business advice, and, and one one bit of advice I do say to people is, look, always be the hardest working person in the room. That like, one thing I do do is I am up at four a.m. I will work all day. Like I sometimes don't get home from work till midnight. Do you know what I mean? But you. Keep working harder than, than what you get paid to do. Eventually, you'll get paid more than what hours you do. You just got to keep going and keep moving forward. Um, and even when you get put back, mate, the amount of things that I've done in the past, thought that's going to work, foul, I never gave up. I never, ever, ever gave up. Like, and now I'm comfortable. I'm not where I want to be. I'm still, I'm still at the start of the slope, but I'm on the slope on the way up. Um, and any bit of advice is just keep going. You have your dreams. You see your dream. You go and get it, because you can do it. I'm walking, talking proof, yeah, that you can go from doing nothing to having everything. And I'm still not finished. So I just, yeah, anyone that wants to reach out, send us an email, send us a t- message, send us a, I'll talk to you, and I promise you I will. 
But you, what, you had your fair there? How old are you? 30, I am, yeah. Fuck's sake. Man, I look a lot. I had that little paper round, 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 but that's what it was. <laughs> it done me, James. This is only the beginning, mate. This is a, that's a great age, I believe, to, to shoot into the stratosphere. I'm 37, so I'm a bit more really? experienced, yeah. I thought so. you were a lot older than that. <laughs> <laughs> Cancel those matters, there have no links in the description after this. Brother, for coming on today and telling your story, listen, I Mate, thoroughly thank enjoyed you very that. Much. You've got a great energy, good guy, and um, no doubt we'll be friends in the future. Take care. Thank you very much. Check out more of my podcasts on the right and be sure to like, share and comment your thoughts on this week's podcast. Thank you.